Hey everybody, welcome back. So you know that the reptile community has had a lot on our plate. We've had a lot of things to deal with as far as legislation coming down the pipe and so forth. But today we're going to talk about what we did this past Saturday. Had a really awesome public education event going on. And Apollo here, he helped me with that. Along with my boa and along with some friends from out here. So we're going to go into that and talk about something really positive we had going on in the community when we come back on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. There's something really important that um, has been on my mind pretty much ever since I've kept started keeping reptiles. And that is we hear so much negative about you know legislation that we got to fight and stuff like that but we've all got the reptile shows that we go to but those are for reptile people we don't have to convince ourselves we don't have to convince our own community that these animals are awesome and we should be keeping them the people that we need to convince is the general public you know we really need to reach out to people who aren't reptile keepers and we had an awesome opportunity to do that um it, it went really well it started out actually as um oddly enough I was just going to go down to a local park behind our science center, set up, take a couple of my animals out there, and just be out there in public and let people that are walking by, you know, come up and ask questions, then see them and touch them and interact with them and so forth. But, you know, kind of since I got that idea, um, started uh, doing a lot of stuff with the Carolina Herpetological Society out here. And that's, uh, you know, Jeremy and Rob from NERD, they, when they moved down here, that's one of the things that they started. I've uh, been to a couple meetings with them. Uh, so far, it's doing really good. Had uh, Aubrey Pruitt out there with us, who is a, a premier retake breeder. Has some amazing animals. And so I figured, well, you know, let's not just make it about me. Why don't I get those guys involved too? So I got started making phone calls to the park and so forth and, um, you know, trying to get permission, making sure that they was okay, you know, with us having live animals out there in public like that. And uh, oddly enough, the uh, director of the park ended up having formerly worked with reptiles at a museum. So it's like score, you know, one of our own community out here. So, you know, she was really on board with it and um, had some folks from the Herb Society that were going to come out as well. And it just so happens that there was another event going on that day. So she suggested that we link up with this other person, uh, the coordinator for that event and just fall in with them. So we had, by the time everything was said and done, it went from, you know, just me going, sitting down at the park with a snake or two, to now we've got probably five people, I think, that uh, came down, brought animals, and set up, we were set up next to uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Science Center was out there, there was actually U.S. Park Rangers came out there to see us, and um, it, it was just really cool event with families coming through going to the different stations and things like that. And of course, coming to check us out. So I just want to share some pictures of it with you guys and give you a, give you an, some ideas. You know, I know there's folks from all over the country, all over the world that, you know, watch this channel. And I've always been of the mindset that, you know, the, the key to us having success in dealing with legislation is not to wait for that legislation to start coming down the pike and then react to it. You know, we need to be doing things preemptively throughout the community um, to get people introduced to these animals, to let them see, you know, they, they may be scared to death of a 14 foot snake until they actually get up and see it, you know, and see things like this, you know, in person when they can actually interact with them and so forth. We had so many positive experiences with folks out there. Um, people were just really, really taken with all the animals. Um, of course, Apollo was one of them. He was out there with us. They absolutely loved him. Uh, Aubrey Pruitt brought a, a spectacular 12-foot um, sunfire cow reticulated python. It's just a gorgeous animal. And I've got all the pictures and stuff like that that we'll go into. I'll let you guys see that stuff. But, um, but first, I really wanted to make the point that... Um, you know, particularly here in North Carolina, you know, we're kind of in a Goldilocks zone where it's not the Florida ecosystem. 
so we don't have to worry about everything being eva invasive out here. Um, and it's not all the way up north where we got to worry about traipsing through snow to get out to, you know, we've got outside reptile rooms, things like that. So it's really a nice area. And we don't have um, and really many unfair laws down here. And I think the best way for us to maintain that in places like this, like I said, is if we get ahead of it and, you know, we start setting up things like this and communicating with fish and wildlife, communicating with the park rangers, communicating with the parks, you know, the local educational facilities, they were so thrilled to see us out there. And it was just, everything was such a positive experience. And we got so many people, really good exposure to our animals. And, you know, maybe some of these folks that would have, uh, would have voted on a ban before may not now because they've got a better understanding of it and as part of this you know part of reaching out to the community and so forth like we were doing another thing that i'm going to be doing is the next couple videos that i've got are going to be interviews not with brian barchak or anybody like that you know not not with people that have been doing this stuff forever really popular um the next couple interviews that i'm going to be doing are with brand new reptile keepers um one of which the very first snake she owned was a reticulated python we're going to talk with her a bit about her experiences um you know learning how to how to handle it and, and how to take care of it and some of the difficulties she had and i've got somebody else that i'll be doing an interview with as well that um it had a couple ball pythons and then transitioned over to retics um got his first retic and you know really want to let everybody know what kind of difficulties you know, some folks can have um, first getting into them, trying to learn the right things to do, trying to learn the right ways to handle and things like that and right ways to feed. And, you know, just just basic stuff, all part that we need to be aware of as uh, as more experienced keepers when we're reaching out to new people, because some of these new people that we reach out to are going to be like, I want that. I want to do that. <laughs> and we need to know the best ways to uh, help them facilitate that so that they're they're safe. They keep their animals healthy. <sighs> See, this is what I was talking about in the other video. <laughs> well, I'm not letting them get around your neck. And he's just trying to hang on. But he's trying really hard to get that tail around my neck. I'm not too worried about it because he can't really get it all the way around. But uh, this is a good learning point too. So let's go upstairs here. Ah, come on. I'm going to put him back in his enclosure. And, um... Ah, okay, so I'm gonna put him back in his enclosure and we'll go upstairs and I'm gonna show you guys the uh, some of the videos and some of the pictures from the other day. Okay guys, so I'm not gonna go too overboard with the production here. The important parts are not this ugly mug on the camera right now. The important parts are the pictures. So I'm just gonna show you guys some pictures from the Herb Society and some of the things that we did uh, this past Saturday. So this first picture here is just from one of our Carolina Herpetological Society meetings. It's one of the first ones and had a really good turnout for it. Everything has been really moving in the right direction. Really excited about where it's going to end up going because uh, we've got some really great people on the board of directors for it. Uh, some really great folks involved in it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and this right here is our event the other day. Um, yeah, as you can see, I'm out there with Apollo. We had a really cool setup. Uh, you can kind of see that yellow line back there in the background alongside the sidewalk there We had it all cordoned off so that you know passers-by wouldn't be walking down a sidewalk and accidentally stumble onto a snake But folks were you know completely welcome to come inside there with us and interact with the animals And you can see we had our local Greensboro Science Center set up with some things out there And there was a couple other folks set up Really really awesome day I even got my tripod there because I was going to film that day, but uh, <clears throat> I was really hoarse and, and the audio would have been terrible. So we're going to make do with some pictures. Uh, this is Aubrey Pruitt's Sunfire Cow that he brought down. He was initially going to bring down um, an 18-foot female. And when he got ready to get her out, she was in shed, so he didn't want to mess with her. So he ended up bringing her. And um, it was awesome, man. I opened up the tub and my jaw about just hit the grass uh, such an awesome animal here man Aubrey um, and this is uh, a friend of ours Nick Leone handling her uh, 
just the sweetest girl. And Aubrey produces some really, really amazing animals. I uh, really hope to be doing some stuff with him in the future just so, to maybe get him on here and, and show you guys some of the stuff that he does. Uh, just an outstanding breeder. And there's a couple other pictures of her. And here's our uh, blue tegu that Nick brought out with him. Uh, he was doing pretty good for a little while. He started to get kind of tired. Tegus are going to be moving into their brumation cycles here pretty soon. So I think most of our tegus are starting to get a little grumpy. Uh, but you can see some more how we had everything cored off and some of the other folks that were out there. Um, we had Chris Salisbury came out. He's from Gorgon's Head. He does some really awesome enclosures. Uh, he's also a keeper, and he brought some local snakes out with him, uh, which was a request of the uh, <clears throat> of the coordinator of the event, asked if we could bring a couple local reptiles out. So he had brought those. And this, this is the absolute coolest monitor lizard on the planet. Um, this is Aubrey's as an Asian water monitor and this setup right here this this monitor just sat there the entire time he never tried to get down he never got antsy this was his demeanor the whole time he was out there just sitting there looking around he was completely fine with anybody messing with him uh, it's just just an amazing such an amazingly well social socialized monitor here loved him if he would have fit in my pocket he'd be here right now hanging out with me um, this is the only time I'd seen him actually leave that at all it was when he tried to crawl up on me there for a second I think this was maybe uh, a couple seconds before or after I got my first actual French kiss from a lizard um, I was talking with somebody and it four or five inch tongue of his just tickled my tonsils it was really weird. I kind of felt violated, but I, I really liked that lizard, so it was okay. Uh, and there's Aubrey. Uh, like I said, really awesome guy, man. He, he's uh, working on breeding these these monitor lizards, the Asian water monitors. Uh, and does a lot of stuff with retics. And I'm going to try and get him on so you guys can see some, some stuff with him. He's a really awesome guy. Um, and we had some other tortoises out there with us. Um, some of the other displays from the other groups that were out there and oh there's more tortoises playing in the grass and i didn't get near as many pictures i didn't get near as much video as i wanted to when i was out there a lot of that stuff i'd actually had folks that were out there send to me uh, just because i was so busy enjoying it anytime i'm around any kind of animals that are new to me that belong to somebody else i'm just right there i get so engrossed in them it's hard for me to remember to take pictures pull the camera out and so forth so as you can see, it was a really awesome time, and um, I guarantee, I promise, that the next one we do, I want to do one more of something like this before the summer's over with, uh, I will make a point of doing a lot more recording and get a lot more footage out there about it. So like I said, guys, my next couple videos I'm going to post are going to be the interviews with the new keepers. Uh, I really encourage everybody to watch it, shed a little bit of light on you know what it's like just you know, just getting into the hobby for the first time or just getting into larger constrictors for the first time. And as soon as those things get out, I'll have those linked to the end of this, um, into the end screen there. So really easy to find. Uh, check those out. And don't forget, get down, like the videos, get subscribed to the channel. We're going to be coming up on 2,000 subs here, so it's a nice little benchmark for us. Uh, community out here, man, you guys have been awesome. Uh, all of the feedback's been great. I really love you guys, and I'll see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.